just in case you're wondering, poison ivy on your nipple is pretty evil. It's fun for the first little while and then it becomes really sore. So I uh, wanted to talk about poison ivy. I like to call it PI because um, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, it can also be poison oak, poison sumac, which I've never seen, um, or even black poison wood, which I got in Jamaica um, on the first day of the Jamaica Fat Tire Festival, which sucked, but not as bad as the uh, bout of poison ivy I just got uh, a couple weeks ago. much better now um, and I got uh, poison ivy in the middle of winter poison ivy uh, it's not it's not actually the leaves that contain uh, the poison part of poison ivy which is called urushal or something like that I know more how to spell it than I do say it it's uh, an oil that's in the plant that your skin is allergic to. And um, those of you who are allergic, like myself, uh, it can really suck. And when that oil gets spread around in your skin, your skin has an allergic reaction, and that's why it blisters and oozes and seeps and does all sorts of awesome things, including being really fucking itchy. So it's not just in the leaves, it's throughout the entire plant. And so you have to be uh, cognizant of not just the leaves, but the entire plant. Uh, I'm sure most of us as mountain bikers are used to getting a little poison ivy here and there uh, while riding bikes. Um, but for trail builders, uh, it's a real thing. And I seem to get uh, poison ivy um, at least once a year, um, but never this bad. I got it really bad this year. Um, and again, in the middle of winter. I was digging through a patch of trail uh, down on my hands and knees, packing dirt, you know, not thinking anything of it. It was actually a beautiful day and it's winter. And so I didn't sweat. When I came home, I didn't have a shower. And don't tell anybody, I didn't have a shower till the next day. In fact, I didn't even have a shower until I noticed that I had poison ivy. And then I had a shower. That was my mistake. But the longer the oil sits on your skin, the more reaction time, the deeper it penetrates into your skin and the more you can spread it everywhere. So I went home, thankfully I was wearing gloves and I washed my hands when I got home. So I didn't have any of my hands, but I had it all on the inside of my wrists. And so I sleep kind of like a dead man on my back sometimes, resting my wrists on my chest and I guess I had an itch on my nose or something. I must have scratched my armpit, uh, my ass a little bit. Um, and so yeah, I got the poison ivy everywhere. If you think you've been in contact with poison ivy, you want to shower with soap and rub vigorously as soon as possible, like as soon as possible. Um, people recommend that you clean your tools and if your dog's around, wash your dog. I haven't done either of those two things. Um, I can't imagine washing my dog every time I thought it was a poison ivy. I'd be constantly washing the dog. Um, but I definitely would recommend washing clothes, especially gloves or, you know, again, anytime where your arms are in, ripping out plants and that sort of stuff, and you think you've been poison ivy, your jackets, your sweater, your t-shirt. Think about all the places you don't want poison ivy and scrub those places extra good, uh, like your junk. Let's say that you were like me and didn't realize that you got poison ivy or weren't able to wash yourself, uh, and now you got poison ivy. Now, obviously, you can go on the internet and you can find all sorts of remedies. Again, I'm just gonna share a bit of my uh, learnings and wisdom, and I have come up with some treatments. It's certainly not perfect. Uh, at the end of the day, you're gonna itch, it's gonna suck. Uh, you kind of need to steel yourself to that. But I do have some tips. So first of all, after you've washed yourself and all that sort of stuff and you still get the blisters, they still start coming up. There are some creams that you can put on. I know a lot of people talk about calamine lotion. I feel like that is just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. 
uh, particularly effective, just seems like a waste of time. This is actually on a prescription, but it's just hydrocortisone. You can get it here in Canada at 1%, and it's pretty effective at removing the itch uh, from mild poison ivy. You can get that in your pharmacy. Um, of course, I think cortisone may cause cancer, so you know, use sparingly. The cortisone was not cutting it for me, nowhere near it. In fact, I felt found it to be as, about as effective as calamine lotion with this particularly bad batch. So I called up my doc. So he gave me this Betaderm cream. It's the first time I've ever used this. I've been using hydrocortisone all before this and it was working fine. But again, I got a really nasty case. So Betaderm cream, this is like 0.05%, super effective. This like knocked out the itch, like within 24 hours, it knocked out the inflammation, the, the swell, like everything just, back way down but there are also things you can do other than just applying medication um, to help uh, to me the trick is is you know removing the itch I can deal with cuts and abrasions where mountain bikers were usually bleeding um, so that's not really the big deal um, but it's the itching uh, and you I often find I'm itching in particular times so in the middle of the night I don't want to be up all night itching so I've got a bit of a, a hack that I do and then the same thing would go before going into work. I don't want to be at work itching all the time. So what I do is I put my affected area that's blistered and oozing um, under really hot water, like basically as hot as my tap will go. What happens uh, is that, and this is the opposite of what doctors tell you to do. So, you know, um, you know, do you do you, uh, is that, um, it, that the heat releases the histamines. So the histamines are an allergic, uh, it, basically your body reaction to something allergic. And by applying the heat, it flushes the histamines out of the, the, the skin, at least the ones that are right there. Again, not a doctor. But, and this is important to know, what this causes is an unbelievable itch. Now it's, it's an itch that's a lot, it's almost like ecstasy. So you, and I'm not, I'm, I'm being totally serious. It gets incredibly itchy and you're gonna wanna scratch it and you cannot scratch. That is the rule, do not scratch. Those scabs there aren't from scratching. It's just, that's how bad it got. I don't scratch, but what I do is I rub. And so I'll put my arm under the tap and I'll put it on hot water and it's basically, it's almost like an orgasm and I'm, I basically lose my sanity. I kind of go away uh, and my partner watches me. I, I actually sometimes drool a bit. It's, yeah, it sounds crazy. It feels crazy, but it's also kind of nice. After about 45 seconds of that, a really hot water, again, and you'll find it, the hotter it gets, the, the better that itch is gonna feel. It'll abate. Then you put on cold, because that's what the doctors say to do is put a cold compress to reduce uh, the, the, the itching, all that sort of stuff. Then I dry it off and then I will apply a cream like this. I will be good for a few hours. And so I do that before bed. I do that before meetings um, at work and that sort of stuff. But I also take this uh, Benadryl. So it's, you know, what does it say? I'm sure you guys all know what this stuff is, Benadryl. I find it to be effective. I also take that before bed and I take that before going into work just to like mellow things out. Just remember, do not scratch, rub. I imagine people have better remedies than me. So if you got one, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you never get poison ivy and uh, happy trail building.